어. 뭐. <웃음> Good morning, brethren. Church of the Living God. Hello. It's a beautiful day today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please get your authorized version of the scripture. And please follow me along in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse. Okay? Let's start in Colossians chapter 3. Verses 1 and 2. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. If ye then be risen with Christ. If. Risen. Risen from the dead. Born again. Raised up out of the dunghill. The dunghill of this world. The dunghill of your past life. The dunghill of your sin. Okay? If ye then be risen with Christ, if ye are truly saved, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection. Okay? Set your affection. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Okay? Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, we as the Church of the Living God, we know that we are supposed to keep our eyes upon our Lord Jesus Christ. And to do this exactly, to set our affections wherever your heart is, there's where your treasure is. Okay? Where is your heart? Does it belong unto the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is your heart divided? Trying to show love unto the Lord Jesus Christ? Trying to have your heart belong unto Him? But divided with things of the world. For if ye be, for set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Okay? Now, here's the, here's the question. Who can perfectly do this 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Hmm? If you can, raise your hand, all right? <laughs> yeah. See, there are those out there who preach this sinless perfectionism. That once the Lord saves you, you don't sin anymore. Or that you got to stop sinning. Those who preach and teach sinless perfection have never really read, internalized, taken to heart Romans chapter 7. Not at all. Not at all. Because Romans chapter 7 shows us that even the greatest of the church of the living God, Paul, our apostle, even the greatest of the church of the living God, struggled with what you and I struggle with daily too. Now granted, circumstances were different. But at the root, at the root, Paul struggled with his flesh and also sins of the mind as well. Absolutely. And see... The easy believism heretic will come in to Romans chapter 7 and try to teach unto you to have a light attitude on sin, which is something we're not supposed to have. Romans chapter 6 talks about that, okay? But Romans chapter 7 shows us that even the greatest of the great, our apostle Paul, struggled with sin. That's what we're going to look at today. We're going to, I have two sets of scriptures here. Um, we are going to be examining Romans chapter 7 today in depth, okay? So, let us, without further ado, we got a lot to go through. Let us get going. Romans chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Know ye not, brethren... 
Right there, who is he addressing? The Church of the Living God. For I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. Number one, what law is he referring to? He's obviously boop, referring to the Levitical law, the law of Moses, okay? He's not referring to the Talmud or the traditions of men or the traditions of Catholics, okay? No, he's not uh, referring to any of that. He's referring to the actual scriptural law contained here in scripture, okay? That is what he is referring to. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth? Leviticus. Go to Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18. Romans chapter 7 is my favorite chapter in all of Scripture. This is my chapter. Because I can relate totally. Relate totally. And anyone who is risen with Christ, you can too. Leviticus chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, for our instruction in righteousness, remember this is for a different dispensation under the law. And under the law was faith and works, okay? Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Now hold on, for our instruction in righteousness. Remember, Egypt is a type of the world, okay? God who saved us, okay, by his death, burial, and resurrection and cleansed us in his blood, he brought us out of Egypt, the lost world. Okay, out from the dunghill, risen with Christ, okay? So after the doings of the land of Egypt, after the things of the world, okay, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Don't be like the world, okay? And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances, okay? So he takes you out of the one, okay? Don't do what like what I took you out of. And what I'm bringing you into, don't do like them either because what I'm bringing you into, these people are also all messed up, okay? But what, are, what were you to do? Ye shall do, verse four, ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. And let's read verse 5. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Okay? Now this is talking about the law. Okay? He's talking about the statutes, the judgments, the precepts, the commandments, the testimonies, and stuff contained within the law here. This is what he's talking about. This is what Paul is mentioning, okay? Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth? Yes, yes. Because through the law is what? The knowledge of sin, right? But see, he's making reference onto the Levitical law, okay? Let's continue in Romans chapter 7. For the woman, okay, here's a little allegory, okay? For the woman which hath an husband, is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of the husband. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. We're going to be referencing Romans chapter 6 quite a bit today, so be prepared. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 on to verse 7. Uh, the Lord had me to do a expository video on Romans 6. Of course, Moot will be in the description box of this video. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 under verse 7. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ 
were baptized into his death. Now, baptized here in context is a form of, is a type of identification, okay? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ, okay? Baptized into Christ, signified by water baptism, buried and then rose again, okay? Remember, water baptism doesn't save you, by the way, okay, just so you know, but it's symbolic. You go down, you die to the world, and you rise up a new creature in Christ Jesus. It's symbolic, okay? It's an outward confession of an inner conversion, okay? But know ye not that so many of us as were baptized, identified into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Death unto what? Death unto the world. Okay? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, putting on the new man, being dead to the world, being dead to sin, okay? Knowing this, that our old man... Should have let scripture speak for itself, excuse me. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Remember what it says in Galatians chapter 6? Okay. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. That's, uh, excuse me, Galatians chapter 2. Uh, Galatians chapter 2 is that. Beg your pardon, okay. But, okay, we are crucified with Christ. Dead unto the world. Dead unto sin. But yet, Christ lives within us. See? Okay. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin, the body of sin, okay, might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve, because you have a choice, yes, serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. So, verse 2, the woman, because remember too, we are what? Likened unto a chaste virgin. Okay? Okay? For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband, so long as the husband liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of, that, of the husband. So, the law of her husband. Before our Lord saved us, we were children of wrath. Who was our father? Who was our husband? Satan, the little g-god of this world. And now, since Christ has saved us and brought us out of Egypt, we are serving our father, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband. So long as he liveth, but if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. And also he's making reference on to the Levitical law as well. But see, see, we have been brought out of Egypt, okay? We have been brought out of the world. And Satan is the little g-god of this world, remember that, okay? Okay? Verse 3, so then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Galatians chapter 3, and you'll notice that we're going to be hitting Galatians quite a few times today. Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 under verse 14. Galatians 3, verses 10 on to verse 14. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. 
For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. <laughs> Amen. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. The law is not of faith. So what were they having faith in? They were having faith in the sacrifices that God would honor them for doing what he prescribed. Okay? Remember, under the law, the faith was in the sacrifices to, for, to cover their sin, okay? And that they did this, this, and this in order to be right in the sight of God, okay? All right? Hence, the law was not of faith because you can say that you were blameless like Paul did, okay? But yet not having true faith in God, but yet having faith in what you did, see? Okay? That's why the law is not of faith, Okay? The law and the law is not of faith. It says it right there. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Okay? Verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So then, in Romans 7, verse 3, So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress though she be married to another man. And remember, the law is made for who? Sinners. The law was made for sinners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely it was. Because if there was a law that could give life, then what need would there be to bring something else in? Okay. And the law is not of faith. Right now, let's read verse four. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become now. He's he's explaining verses one and on to verse three. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay? Wherefore, my brethren, ye, are, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him because sin requires the penalty of death to cleanse sin requires blood remember that when you sin somebody had to pay for that sin okay who paid for it i wonder wherefore my bre my brethren ye also are become dead to the law by the body of christ that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. And then go back to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. We want verses 8 on to verse 14 now. Now, 
If we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, Catholic. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Mm. That ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Mm. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye. Now see, these are denoting what? Choice. Choosing. Yes. Yes. How often do I tell you? God's not holding a gun at your head. Neither is the devil. Right? Okay? Verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. Members. Your body. Parts of your body. Okay? But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. By grace, through faith. Because the law was there for what? For sinners, to show us our sins. Right? And no one could keep the law perfectly. No one could ever do that. Okay? And if you offended one point of the law, you've, you've messed up the whole thing. Okay? Can you imagine what it must have been like to continually having to keep the law? You could have joy, of course, in the Lord, but that, that gnawing thing in the back of your mind of keeping the law. Mm. Praise the Lord that we in this dispensation, we do not have to keep the law in order to be saved or stay saved, okay? That does not mean that we are not under the law to Christ, okay? The Pauline epistles and stuff like that uh, for us today in this dispensation. But uh, remember, we are not under the law of Moses today. Okay, now let's read verse 5. For when we were in the flesh... The motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. And while we're in Romans 6, now let's read verses 19 on to verse 23 in Romans chapter 6. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. The infirmity of your flesh. Yeah. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto separation, holiness. Being separate from that. Okay? For when ye were the servants of sin, Ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death. Yes, Somebody had to die for your sin. Keep that in mind the next time you sin. That somebody had to die for that sin. For the wages of sin is death. It ought to have been you. It ought to have been me. But no. 
Christ died for us. Okay? Christ died for the sins of, of the whole world. Yes, he did. But see, not everybody is going to come on to him for the forgiveness of sins according to his desire, his plans, which is brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord, calling upon the name of the Lord. Okay? But for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 6 in Romans chapter 7. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not the oldness of the letter. Oldness of the letter. People will come to that verse and say, See, you, you don't need a Bible. Or no, you can't let yourself be ruled by a book. Nonsense. Nonsense. He's making reference the oldness of the letter. What is he making reference to? Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Like I told you, we're going to be hitting Galatians quite a bit here. Galatians chapter 5 verses 1 on to verse 6. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Is not our liberty truly Christ Jesus himself? Think about that. Is not our liberty Christ himself? We'll look at that in a minute here. Just let's, let's continue, okay? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, circumcision is reference unto keeping the law, because if you were circumcised, you were to keep the whole law. Many people nowadays are circumcised ignorantly because of whatever reasons, okay? But when Paul is mentioning this, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Because he's saying here that only those who are going to circumcise themselves were doing so to keep the law, okay? So if you are going to keep the law, Christ shall profit you nothing. Why? Because you're doing it and Christ is doing nothing for you. See? Okay? By the works of the law, what you are doing. Okay? That's what the law is signifying. Christ shall profit you nothing. Why? Because you're circumcising yourself that you want to be put under the curse so you do things to make yourself right. Okay? Verse 3. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. So you're looking to the law in order to make your, to do something what? So you get the honor. So you get the glory. Ye are fallen from grace. By grace are ye saved through faith. Grace, unmerited favor. Delivered, given unto you. Liberty, given unto you. Okay? But see, you take yourself under the yoke of the law to keep the commandments of men, the law, or even the, the law in Scripture, which is clearly, we do not, this is what Galatians is about. This is what he's talking about. Okay? We don't keep the law today to be saved or say, stay saved. Okay? Why? Because that's something you are doing. Ye are fallen from grace. For we through the capital S spirit wait for the hope of righteousness, his righteousness, by faith. For, if, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage, going under the law, or under the laws and traditions of men. Uh, really quickly, just one verse. 
Uh, John, go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 56, one verse. John, John chapter 8. Uh, John, uh, one second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. I misread my notes. John 8, 36. If. The Son, therefore, shall make you free. You, singular, free. Ye, plural, shall be free indeed. And see, when the Lord save you, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. He dwells within you. God in you. God in you. Okay? So if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, Free from what? Free from the law. Free from the bondage of sin. Okay? Ye shall be free indeed. Free indeed. And 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 3 on to verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter two. One second again, brethren. Okay, sorry about that, brethren. I've uh, misread my notes again. Second Corinthians chapter three, verses three on to verse six. Okay, if the Son shall make ye free, if the Son will make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Now, in verse uh, 6 here, in Romans chapter 7, But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 3 on to verse 6. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of of the living God, that's a capital S, okay? Not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to God word, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Very important thing to remember about verse 5. See, your sufficiency could be of yourself. If you are keeping the law, if you are doing these statutes, the commandments and stuff like that, okay? It's of yourself, okay? When you're trying to keep a law in order to be righteous, okay? Now, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. Because when you're keeping the law, okay? Or the traditions of man like Catholics. What do, what do Catholics say when you talk to them about these things? It's like, oh, I was baptized. I was confirmed. I had mass today. I did this, this, and this. So I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> I bet you are. But see, our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter. What is he talking about? He's making reference to the law. But of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The letter killeth, the law killeth. Absolutely, amen. Why? Because the law, you know, the commandments, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, that was God's perfect requirement to be right in his eyes. Remember Satan in the Garden of Eden, uh, in the Garden of Eden, how he said unto Eve, you know, go ahead and eat of the fruit. Disobey God. Do what God, go against what God has said. Okay? Before the, uh, in the day that you eat thereof, God does know that your eyes will be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So how many out there right now are saying that I am God, I judge what is good and evil, Right? Right? You are your own God, judging what is good and evil. So God's like, okay, you become, you know, you are little g gods, meaning that you are able to know 
uh, to judge what is right and wrong, so you think, okay? That's what it means, ye are gods. You are able to judge, okay? That you are judging what is good and evil for yourself when God tells us what is good, what is right, okay? Talked about that in a video before, okay? But see, God said, okay, this is my requirement, okay? You, you, you become like me, okay? You are able to judge what is good and evil, right? Right? That's what he says in Genesis, right? He has become as one of us, being able to know good and evil. So it's like, okay, he says, here, this is what's good. And see, in trying to keep perfectly what he says is good, the law, you quickly find out, look, look you can't do it. It kills you. The law kills you your self-righteousness. The law is there for sinners, for adulterers, for whoremongers, and stuff like that, okay? The letter killeth. The Old Testament law killeth. What was it there to kill? Your self-righteousness. Yes, to show you that you could never keep God's laws. You can never do it. But our sufficiency is of God, who hath who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit, the Spirit giveth life. Romans chapter 7, verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? <laughs> God forbid! Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 19 on to verse 21. Galatians chapter 3. Verses 19 on to verse 21. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. Here it is. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin. See, that's the purpose of the law. To show you what is sin. Okay? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. And that kind of stuff. Okay? Those were God's perfect commandments. But see, man, in disobeying God from the garden, okay? In disobeying what God had said. It was simple. Eat of all this stuff, but don't eat of that tree. Satan comes in. Yeah, hath God said? Eve's like, oh, takes it. Looks good. Eats it. Boom. Everything goes kablooey. Okay? Everything goes kablooey. So now, now, the law was added. Okay? The law was added to show us sin. Okay? So like, okay? You, you can judge between good and evil. Okay? So here, here's what's good. Here's what's good. He gives the law. The law to show you, okay, this is a sin. This is a sin. This is a sin. You do any of these things, you're in a lot of trouble. And then, since man was able to know what is good and evil now, being able to judge, being able to judge, <laughs> uh, knowing what is good and evil, so like, okay, God's like, here, here's what's good. And like I said, one quickly discovers I couldn't keep that at, even at my best state. I couldn't do that even if I tried. And oh, how many do try. And what happens when you have, uh, you know, you fulfill something uh, or you keep a law or something like that. It elevates you. It lifts you up in pride. You're sufficient. You become self-sufficient. But our sufficiency is supposed to be of God. Hmm? Yeah. So no, the law is not sin. The law is good because it shows you sin. 
It shows you that you cannot live up to God no matter how so many of us want to think that we can. Verse 8 in Romans chapter 7. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law, sin was dead. Wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Not where are you going, Brad? Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 21. Okay? Romans chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 21. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where, more, where, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And one verse in Romans chapter 4, verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. But sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. Wrought in you sin taking occasion by the commandment. What does that mean? It means exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden. Satan comes, yay, hath God said you shouldn't eat of all the trees of the fruit of the garden? And Eve, of course, you know the story. Eve says, well, we can eat of anything but the one of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We can eat, okay? And Eve even added, it's like, neither shall ye touch it. And then Satan says what? Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, Okay? knowing what is good and evil, okay? We as man are able to know what is good and evil now because of disobediency, okay? Okay? But the point is, when sin taking occasion by the commandment, thou shalt not covet. Sin says, well, God says you shouldn't covet, but doesn't that look nice? Don't you want to have what he has? Don't you want to have what she has? You see? Sin taking occasion by the commandment. It's, it's spelled out for you what is right and wrong. So sin comes along and says, yeah, yeah, that's wrong, but doesn't it look so good? Doesn't it feel so good, right? And what does that do? But sin taking occasion by the commandment. The law says, thou shalt not do this. Sin comes along always through the flesh. Sin comes along within you and it's like, I want what he has. Thou shalt not covet. I want, I want that. I want that. And then it wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Lust. Animalistic lust. You gotta have it. Okay? For without the law, sin was dead. You would, and like you said in verse 7, Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust except the law said, had said, Thou shalt not covet. Okay? That's what that means by sin taking occasion by the commandment. Like I've talked with you before, you know, about how. Um, you know, the big red button, you know, you can tell, you know, use all the buttons around on the, uh, on the dashboard, but that big red button, don't touch that or everything's going to explode. What happens because of the flesh? Our flesh immediately wants to touch that red button. Done. Yeah, exactly. It does. Now look at verse nine. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived. Very interesting wording there that our Lord used through Paul. Sin revived. Sin was brought back. 
and I died. They say ignorance is bliss. Oh, I, I, I didn't know. Want to see a good example of this? Go to Second Kings. Second Kings, chapter twenty-two. Second Kings, chapter twenty-two. Second Kings, chapter twenty-two. We want verses eight on to verse thirteen. What is this talking about? Let's look. Second Kings, chapter twenty-two, verses eight on to verse thirteen. Now, this is jo Josiah, okay? Josiah restoring the temple during the days of the kings, okay? And during this time, they had, you know, hearsay knowledge of the law and of God. But they really didn't have the tangibles because of all the heresy that had been going on. And remember, Josiah came to power in the, uh, after the reign of Manasseh. Okay, Manasseh, who is in heaven. But because of the evil that he wrought, even though King Manasseh is right with God, is in heaven right now, even though Manasseh repented and started following the Lord, all his years of heresy, all his years of going against the Lord could not be undone amongst the people. See, that's why we as the Church of the Living God, it is very imperative that we walk according to the scriptures, that we live our life in accordance with the scriptures, okay? Because Manasseh is a good example of that. He, as a king, set the example for sin, okay? He gets saved, so to say, okay? He is made right with the Lord, okay? Yet, in him doing that and trying to turn people onto the Lord, the damage was already done, see? Real good instruction and in righteousness there about King Manasseh. But Josiah came after King Manasseh. So, verses 8 on to verse 13 in 2 Kings chapter 22. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king, and brought the king word again, and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it into the hand of them that, did the, that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe shewed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Now remember, remember, Josiah came after the reign of Manasseh, okay? Well, actually, after, this, uh, after his son Amon, or Amon, okay, who was just like his father Manasseh before. Uh, Amon didn't last that long. But Josiah, again, was coming to power off of the heels of King Manasseh, okay, who did a lot of evil to Israel, even though he himself was right in the eyes of the Lord at his death and is in heaven right now his damage that he did as a lost man, as someone who was against the Lord, could not have been undone. At that time, at least, okay? At that time, he already made his mark, unfortunately, okay? But here, Josiah was hearing. They found the book of the law, which apparently, if they found it, that means that it wasn't being used, right? So, and then Shaphan read it before the king. Look at this. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. Where are we? Where are we? Verse 9. For I was alive without the law once. Hey. Oh, what? What's, who's to say what I'm doing is wrong, right? But when the commandment came, like we're looking at right now, sin revived, and I died. So, King Josiah, here's the book, uh, the words of the book of the law. And he's like, whoa, 
Whoa! <laughs> There's his, he uh, rents his mantle, his garments, okay, rents his clothes. It's like, whoa! Whoa! Hold up! Wow! Okay? You might be saying, well, wasn't he brought up in the ways of the Lord? But uh, apparently not! Remember, he's following in the footstep of Manasseh, and then uh, Ammon, the king's son, Ammon, okay? And he didn't reign that long, okay? <laughs> what was it? Um, he reigned only two years. Ammon reigned only two years after Manasseh, and Ammon kept the old sins of Manasseh and furthered them, okay? So, apparently, no. Josiah was unaware of these things. But see, when he was made aware, what was his reaction? Rents his clothes. When you learn of your sin, when you learn of your condition and need for a savior, does it prick your heart like it does in Acts chapter 2? Like it did in Acts chapter 2 for those people? Saying, men and brethren, what shall we do? Or does it cut you? And you stop your ears. I'm a good person. I don't want to hear that. And you gnash with your teeth on who is being used of our Lord as his messenger. Which one is it? Big part. Which one is it, dear friend? Let's continue. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Ahikam the son of Shaphan, and Achabor the son of Machaiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asahiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go ye! Like, come on! Hurry! Come on! Go, go, go! Let's go! Come on! This is this is not good! <laughs> okay? Go ye, inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that is found. Are you looking at that? Don't look at me. Are you looking at that? For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. Oh boy. Oh boy. And then he he is uh, uh, then he is confirmed that it's like uh, yeah y'all in trouble. You you better do something about this. Okay. <laughs> y'all you know, better do something about this. Okay. Absolutely. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. How do you handle when you, when the Lord, through the scriptures, exposes your sin to you? Hmm? How do you handle rebuke? Hmm? Do you go on to the Lord? Or do you stop your ears? Do you inquire of the Lord? It's like, Okay, Lord, I didn't know I was doing that. Or, oh, wow, you, you, you know, for the babes, it's like, oh, wow, wow, that this is sin. I didn't know that. Okay? How one reacts in such a situation is very telling of what type of metal they are. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, we want verses 13 on to verse 17. Romans chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 17. For until the law, until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. See, the law is good. The law tells you, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Okay? And there are those out there who want you to believe that we, in this dispensation as the church of the living God, have no law amongst ourselves in the scriptures. Uh, they're called easy believism heretics. Watch out for them. Okay? But then again, there are those that go very, you know, crazy. Lordship salvationists. Those who say, you're lost if you disagree. Or you're lost if you do X, Y, Z. Okay? Watch out for them. Watch out for them as well, okay? Romans chapter 5, verses 13 on to verse 17. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Yeah, because you don't know what sin is until the Lord tells you. Okay? 
Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Yeah, some will say, well, I, I didn't do like Adam did. No, but you came from Adam, whether you like to admit that or believe it or not. Okay? We all descend from Adam and Eve. Okay? Whether you want to acknowledge that or believe that or not, that, that doesn't matter. We all come from Adam and Eve. And because of what our first father and mother did, we are bearing that being brought into the world. That's why we are born sinners, because our first father and mother were sinners. They sinned and disobeyed God. See, and because of that, that has brought down throughout all of us. Okay? Even Moses. Oh, yeah, even Moses. Let's continue. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift by grace through faith. Okay? For if through the offense of one many be dead, Adam, and the gift by grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it were, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Because we're all born sinners because of what Adam did. Okay? But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. That our sufficiency be not of ourselves, but of God who raiseth the dead. And on this go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verses 12, on to verse 23. John chapter 15, verses 12, on to verse 15. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, <laughs> ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, Therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Yea, and all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. <laughs> if they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and, right here, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had, they had not had sin. But now, they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. You, you lost people out there. Um, the gospel is very plain, very plain, and is available. Okay, the true gospel is out there. 
repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Coming to our Lord, broken of your self-righteousness, godly sorrow having contrition, it's your fault. And in fear of the Lord, because he can send you to hell, call upon the name of the Lord that he save you. Okay? The true gospel is out there. You, you have no excuse. You have no excuse. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And verses 10 and 11. And the commandment which was ordained to life. But wait a minute, it just said that the, the, it kills. Yes, it kills you to show you that number one, you can't keep it perfectly. And number two, to keep you from those things that God doesn't want you to do. So in keeping of that, it was ordained to keep you, give you life, to keep you away from the sin that kills you. Okay? And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Exactly that. Okay? Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Okay? Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verses 7 on to verse 11. Okay? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. Yeah, because if you stay away from what God says to stay away from, then, oh, 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 good, good, you know? The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Aha, uh -huh. you would not know what sin is unless God told you what sin is, okay? The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Right here. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found unto death. I found to be unto death. Verse 11. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me and by it slew me. Taking occasion by the commandment deceived him and slew him. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 I thought I was doing something right. But whoa, wait a minute. Are you? I, I thought I was doing good. But see, if you break one point of the law, you've broken the whole, you've broken the whole thing, see? So you're just like, you're like, oh, I thought I was doing good. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I'm doing right here, but I'm off. Oh, 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 oh yeah. <laughs> uh, I can only imagine, brethren. I can only imagine. I mean, the, the law was in what? In practice for what? Oh, thousands of years, right? But wow, oh, praise the Lord, we don't have to go through that today. You know, <laughs> thank you, Father. Praise the Lord, we don't have to go through that. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Okay. Verses 7 on to verse 11. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious... God's perfect commandments. You want to be right with God? Keep these, okay? And by keeping of them, there is great reward, okay? And note how we looked at uh, Psalm 19, 7, 11, and 2 Corinthians 3, 7, and 11. Hmm? Isn't that interesting, okay? But if the ministry, uh, continue in the scriptures, but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory. Think about that. Okay? 
Paul, like I said, made mention about uh, as regarding uh, the law, blameless. Okay, so if the ministration of condemnation be glory, like keeping the law, it's like, okay, I'm blameless in the law here, here, and here. So whew, it's a glory, okay? God's law is glorious, yes. He tells you, this is sin, stay away from it. And under the law, you were to do that. Why? To please him, okay? Okay? Because remember, because of Adam and, uh, Adam and Eve, ye shall be as God's, Knowing good and evil. Being able to judge what is good and evil. So God gives you what is good. Okay? Much more doth the ministration of righteousness, Christ's righteousness, okay, exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away was glorious, the law, much more that which remaineth is glorious. And what remains? Christ abiding in us. Okay? And of course, go to Hebrews chapter 7. Just one verse here. A couple of one verse things here. Hebrews chapter 7. Just one verse. Verse 19. For the law made nothing perfect. Blameless. But the law made nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope, the blessed hope, the redemption of, our, of the purchased possession, but the blessed hope is our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? But a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. For the law made nothing perfect. You could be blameless because you did X, Y, Z, but it made nothing perfect. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The bringing in of a better hope did. And while we're here, James, James chapter 2, one verse, verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend at one point, he is guilty of all. <laughs> For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. <laughs> For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend at one point, he, <laughs> he is guilty of all. Oh, wow. Wow, man, right? Right? Wow. Wow. Go to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Okay? Acts chapter 15. And here is the... Here's the ultimatum. Here's the, here's the ultimate thing. Okay, not ultimatum, excuse me. Here's the ultimate thing. Acts chapter 15, verses 5 under verse 11. But there arose up certain of the sect of the, sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice. God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, yes, God does know your heart, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their flesh by faith. Whoop, oops, excuse me. <laughs> purifying 
their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, pay attention. Why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? No one could keep the law perfectly, brethren. Okay? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. By the great, through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. By grace, through faith. Not your belief, not because you're a good person, or not because you did all this other stuff, or not because you're following a man. Okay? But by grace. By grace, through faith. And, and and you read this, and it's like, wow. Wow, man. Seems pretty hopeless, doesn't it? Seems, especially for us today, seems pretty hopeless. Verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Verse 13. Was that, was that then which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, which the law is there to do. Okay? The law itself is not death unto you. Okay? It's there to show you sin. And because of that, it kills your self-righteousness. Yes, but the law itself is glorious. Okay? Verse 12. Okay? Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Psalm 119 Mem. Psalm 119 Mem. Come on, fingers, work with me. Psalm 119 Mem. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't got that memorized yet. That's okay. Uh, verses 97 on to verse 104. Mem. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies. For they are ever with me. And oh boy, aren't they, right? <laughs> I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way, that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, departing from evil. Therefore I hate every false way. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Was that, the, oh, we're verse 13 in Romans chapter 7, was that then which is good made death unto me, God forbid. But sin, but sin, sin. You want to be right with God? You want what's good? He gave the law, okay? You want to be right in the eyes of God? Keep the law. Because why? Because by uh, the law shows you what sin is. So he's saying, was then that which is good made death unto me? The law itself wasn't death because it was ordained to life to keep you from sin. God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Working death in me in that which is good, I can't keep it perfectly. I can't do this. I can be blameless for a while, but then again I fall, and I mess up. Okay? <laughs> okay. They left. Psalm 119, they left. Verses 25 on to verse 32. They left, or daleth. My soul cleaveth unto the dust, because we are of dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. Make me alive. According to thy word. 
I have declared my ways, and thou hurtest me. Teach me thy statutes. <laughs> Lord, I'm no good. Help me. <laughs> Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Hmm. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Talk about how the Lord had mercy on us as a witness unto the loss. Okay? Shewing forth, working out that salvation that our Lord has put in himself. That the Lord working out what he has put in himself. Okay? Shewing people. I, I, hey, if the Lord can save me, he can save you. Okay? Me, a sinner who is chief. Okay? My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. The more you realize of how inept you are and what a sinner you are, <laughs> that's a heaviness that only the Lord can lift. You know, you read in the Pilgrim's Progress about the weight that was on Christian's back. Okay? My soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me thy law graciously. I have chosen the way of tr truth. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have stuck unto thy testimonies, O Lord. Put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. <laughs> Was that then which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. And cuff, Psalm 119, cuff, verses 81 on verse 88. My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. All things that were written aforetime were written, written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Romans chapter 15, verse 4, okay? Mine eyes fail for thy word, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? For I am become like a bottle in the smoke, yet do I not forget thy statutes. How many are the days of thy servant? When wilt thou execute judgment on them that persecute me? <laughs> the proud have digged pits for me, which are not after thy law. <laughs> All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me. All thy commandments are faithful. <laughs> Was that then which is good, faithful? Made death on me, God forbid, but sin. They had almost consumed me upon earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. Quicken me after thy loving kindness, so shall I keep the testimony of thy mouth. Looking at verse 86 again, all thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully, help thou me. Amen. 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 See, what he's saying is the law is good, but it showed him sin, and that sin is what kills him, not the law. The law shows you it. it the law is there to kill you of your self-righteousness, and that is exactly what Paul is exhibiting here and explaining, okay? That's what he is explaining, okay? All right, now verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am fleshly, carnal, soul, under sin, under sin. Proverbs chapter 7, beg your pardon, brethren. Proverbs chapter 7, we want verses 1 on to verse 5. Very interesting here. Proverbs 7, talking about a certain woman dressed like an harlot? Hmm. Oh, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. 
Hmm, I wonder. Proverbs chapter 7, verses 1 under verse 5. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law is the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, fear the Lord, and call understanding thy kinswoman. There again, wisdom being likened unto a woman, a beautiful woman, and understanding thy kinswoman. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. And understanding is what? Departing from evil. That they may keep thee from the strange women. Strange woman, excuse me. From the stranger which flattereth with her words. God's not mad at you. God loves you. Oh, repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Just believe and say yourself, save yourself. You know, you really need to give up all these things before the Lord even considers you because the Lord Jesus Christ, he, he, he's, he is too pure to approach to. So why don't you approach to Mary instead? Because you go to Mary, then she will go to Christ for you. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. 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 Uh, Psalm 51. Psalm 51. The law is spiritual because the law came from God. But I am carnal, fleshly, sold under sin. Psalm 51, verses 6 on to verse 12. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. The inward parts. Not something that you adorn like a t-shirt or a facade that you could put up, but on the inward, okay? And in the hidden part, the hidden man of the heart, thou shalt make me to know wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear, the, hear joy and gladness, that the bones which... Thou hast broken, may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me, now dispensational difference here, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And of course, today you are sealed, eternally secure unto the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved, okay? You are eternally secure. You cannot become unsaved or unsealed. Why? Because it's not your salvation. It's not yours, brethren, okay? But during the law, <laughs> um, you could. Eternal security was not there under the law. That's why David says this, okay? Verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. So of course, Psalm 51, the closest thing you're going to get to a sinner's prayer in all of Scripture. Okay? Paul here is admit, uh, Paul. Uh, David here is, is admitting, it's like, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm not good. I'm carnal. I'm fleshly. I, I'm, I'm sold under sin. I'm no good, Lord. Please forgive me. Wash me, cleanse me, create in me a new heart. Okay? And this is after what his debacle that he committed with Bathsheba. Okay? For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. And Ecclesiastes chapter 7, one verse, verse 20. And here's something that a lot of people need to remember. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Hi. Go back to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We want verses 5 on to verse 13. Romans chapter 8, 
verses 5 on to verse 13. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, capital S, God himself, the things of the Spirit, also capital S. For to be carnally minded, minding earthly things, what did we start out with? Set your affections on things that are above, not on things on the earth. Okay. All right. <clears throat> For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Why? Because the carnal mind is enmity against, against God. Minding worldly things. Using worldly programs. Worldly things to get your way. Worldly things to promote what is supposed to be spiritual. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Well, our spirit and soul are in the flesh, the skin suit. Yes, they are. But see, being in the flesh, meaning living by it. Yes, our spirit and soul are within the skin suit. Absolutely they are. Yes, but... Are we in the flesh, meaning living by the flesh? Hmm? So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. What are we reading to here? Uh, verse 13, okay. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the capital S spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you and the Lord is that spirit. Okay. If. So be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, if you're saved. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, and the Lord is that Spirit, he is none of his. You can put up all the facades you want. You can try to say all the sweet words. You can cheat and get uh, uh, computer programs that pump out videos or whatever. You can do all of that all day, all night. You can copy and emulate someone else. You can do that all day and all night. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, if Christ be in you, the, the body, the body is dead because of sin. And the capital S Spirit, God himself, is life because of righteousness, whose righteousness is own. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive, your mortal bodies by his capital S Spirit that dwelleth in you. Okay? That's very simple. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. I, am, I owe my salvation because of the teachings of so-and-so. Or if it wasn't for so-and-so, I wouldn't be like this. Or if it wasn't for so-and-so's book, or so-and-so's ministry, or whatever. God uses man, but who is the one who saves you? Yes, God uses men. Absolutely. But I, I've, I've seen a lot of people. It's like, I owe my life to so-and-so for his ministry and what he taught. Oh, oh. Okay, that, see, when you hear something like that, brethren, that ought to be a red flag for you. That ought to be, if anything, it's like, I'm so glad the Lord used so-and-so. Okay, but no, how often do you hear uh, or you see in comment sections about uh, a lot of these religious people? It's like, oh, praise God for so-and-so's ministry or praise God for so-and-so. Yeah. And what do they do even in saying that? 
They're lifting up the man. They're lifting up the man. Yeah. Yeah. That, that ought to be a red flag. Someone who is a servant of the Lord takes no credit for anything. It's like, hey, 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 hey I'm just a messenger, man. Okay. That's it. I, I ain't nothing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Mortify. Put down. Okay. Now, verse 15. Up to verse 15, Paul has to speak with us that, okay, the law is good and holy. Yes. Through the law, we know what sin is. The law is good. If we keep the law, you know, it's good for us. But then again, we can't keep the law. But the law is good. Ah! Terry, you know, tears his hair out of his head rips his bear out kind of stuff is like oh verse 15 for that which I do what is that he do he sins Romans chapter 3 one verse Romans chapter 3 one verse verse 10 as it is written there is none righteous no not one for that which I do what is he talking about sin as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. For that which I do, I allow not. Okay? As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. For that which I do, I allow not. And also, of course, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Of whom I am chief. So, for that which I do, I allow not. He's talking about sin. But he's also, he called himself a sinner who is chief. For what I would, that do I not. What, he, what would he? What would Paul, what would you? Right? First, uh, first. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Okay? For what I would, that do I not. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Live any longer in there therein live in it okay we we all sin every day and if you come across someone who says that they don't sin or they haven't sinned today or i don't sin every day get away from them because they are basically calling themselves god who never sinned okay well i i don't sin every day oh so you're just like jesus christ god <laughs> watch out for people Watch out for people like that. But okay. For that which I do, I allow not. I allow not. He's talking about sin. He sins. Okay. For what I would not sin, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Uh, Romans chapter 6, verses 15 and 16. Okay. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? God forbid. Verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? That, but what I hate, that do I. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But of course. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, 
And verse 9, let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. But what I hate, that do I. Abhor that which is evil, sin. So Paul is basically saying in one verse there, for what I for that which I do, sin I allow not. And remember, he called himself a sinner who is chief. For those of you who preach this satanic, wicked, devilish, sinless perfectionism, what do you do with verse 15? For that which I do, I allow not. He does neither of us. If we could, we would sin not sin at all. There would be no sin. I believe in no sin. So do you if you're of the church of the living God. But, as Paul has been showing us, <laughs> it's kind of hopeless. It's hopeless for us without Christ. And even with Christ within us, he's not forcing us to do anything. For that which I do, I allow not. But that, but for, excuse me, for what I would not sin, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. And verse 16, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Romans chapter 3, one verse, verse 12. Romans chapter 3, verse 12. For they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. And verses 19 and 20. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. For we, okay. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Yeah, because the law says this is sin. So if I do what I would not, meaning sin, yeah, the law is like, well, you, you're sinning, okay? Now, verse, uh, what verse are we on now? Verse, uh, verses 17 and 18. Now then, now a lot of people when they come to verses, not a lot of them, excuse me, but these easy believism heretics and devils like this, when they come to verses 17 and 18, they will say stuff like, well, Paul isn't taking full responsibility for his sins. He's blaming, he's blaming the flesh. Yeah, but see, we are servants, okay? We have a choice, okay? What does Romans chapter 6, verse 16 say? Know ye not that to whom ye yield, give yourself over, yield yourself servants, to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience on to righteousness. See, Paul is not saying, hey, I, I didn't do it. It's, it's, you know, he's not disowning responsibility. No, he's taking full responsibility, but he is showing us exactly where in the trouble lies. Verses 17 and 18. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin dwelleth in me. Yeah, because we're all born sinners. Our spirit and soul are housed within this sagging skin suit. Okay, look, sagging skin suit. Okay, all right. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Okay. For I know that in me that is, see, he's showing you what the problem is. That is in my flesh. 
dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. Christ himself said, the spirit is ready, is willing, the flesh is weak. The flesh profiteth nothing. That's really hard for a lot of people to, to figure out. Okay? See, Paul's not divorcing himself from responsibility. He's taking responsibility. But see, he's showing us, he's telling us, brethren, so you don't beat yourself to death. I've had people contact me who wanted to literally chomp on a bullet because they have sinned and they are of the church of the living God. It's like, whoa, okay, you sinned. Repent, get yourself right with the Lord, but you don't want to, you, you, young lady, <laughs> don't, don't be eating no bullets, okay? You don't do that, all right? We are going to sin. Yes, sin is terrible. Yes, it takes away your fellowship with the Lord. Yes, but if the Lord can't forgive you for that, then who are we serving? The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Okay? Now, that does not mean that we take a light attitude toward it. Okay? I mean, if you are like just close to actually going to eat a bullet, Whoa, 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 whoa. Number one, you would go to heaven if you're of the church of the living God and you decide to chomp on a bullet. Yes, but you don't want to do that. Okay, that would not be good. Okay? Take it like, okay, whoa, I'm in sin. Get your, get your nose in the dirt, boy, woman. Get your nose in the dirt and repent. Okay? Because if you kill yourself, Let's read verses 17 and 18 again. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. What is Paul talking about? Look right across the page. Romans chapter 8 verses 1 on to verse 4. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life, the law of the Spirit of life, in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Which is contained where? Ah, let's keep reading. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. This, this is so difficult for so many so-called Christians to get this. Okay? <laughs> okay? God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Yeah. The flesh was sinful. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The flesh. Read my lips, okay? The flesh of Jesus Christ. Read my lips. The flesh of Jesus Christ was sinful. Christ did not sin. Christ cannot sin because God cannot sin. But God in flesh, that Flesh is what was sinful. The flesh is what Satan tempted. Okay? Paul is telling us, because our spirit and soul are housed within this skin suit, we are going to sin. See, God, Jesus, never sinned, and I never once ever said or called Jesus Christ a sinner. No. But the flesh is what was sinful. Christ himself said, the flesh profiteth nothing. Okay? Did, 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 did you get that? Okay? So, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, 
God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. This is what Paul is talking about. Okay? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Okay? This is what Paul is talking about. Okay? That there is no good thing. My flesh, flesh is not good. Okay? The flesh is not good. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh is weak. Okay? Our spirit and soul are housed within this. God dwells within us. But see, the flesh, this sagging skin suit, this. Okay? And we are in, our spirit and soul are inside this. And the Lord dwells within us. And the Lord dwells within us. That's why when uh, Paul talks about that the temple of God is holy, set apart. Why? Because God dwells in you. That's why if any man, if you even do stuff to your own self, you're going to pay a heavy price for that. Okay? Paul, again, Paul's not divorcing responsibility. He's accepting it, but he's telling you. It's like, hey. As long as I, as long as my spirit and soul are in this sagging sin suit, sin suit, what hope have I? Okay, that's what he's talking about. Verse nineteen: For the good that I would, I do not; but the evil I would not, that I do. It's <laughs> go, go to Joshua. Go to Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. Sin, the wages of sin is death. Okay? The Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve didn't die just like that. It took a long time. But an animal had to die so that they so our Lord could take the skins off of them and clothe Adam and Eve. Okay? You got some. Twits out there, and I beg your pardon, who say, well, maybe God just took the, the, the skin off of the animal and left the animal alive. Y yeah, right. You think our God is that cruel? Give me a break. Give me a break. No, but see, death, sin equals death. Something has to die. Sin is very, sin, the payment for sin is death. Okay? Death. Somebody had to die to make, to pay for sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us, washeth away our sins, okay? But he had to die because of sin, okay? Okay? So, sin is very serious. Not to be taken lightly, which the easy believism heretics do. Don't worry about it. You're not going to lose your salvation. Oh, no, but you're going to make the Lord look bad. You're going to harm your walk, your health, all kinds of other things. Okay? All kinds of other things. See, easy believism heretics will come into a place like this. It's like, hey, hey, don't worry. Don't worry about sin. See, in doing that, they teach you to have a very light attitude on sin when sin costs God manifest in the flesh to die on a cross, die, bury, and raise again the third day according to the scriptures, shed blood on the cross to make atonement for our sins. It costs that. To make you and me right with him. And should we not abhor such sin? Huh? Okay. Go to Joshua 24. Verses 19 and 20. Different dispensation. Totally dis different dispensation. Okay. Totally. This is under the law. Okay. Under the law, which was faith and works. But we're looking at this for a, uh, for a specific reason to show us the fallibility of man that man at his best state is altogether vanity joshua 24 verses 19 on to verse 20 and joshua said unto the people ye cannot serve the lord for he is an holy god 
He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. For if ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath done you good. Now, ye cannot serve the Lord, and he will not forgive your transgressions, okay? Now, remember, this was under a different dispensation, okay? God does forgive sin. What is he talking about here, okay? Man by himself cannot serve God, okay? Even under the law, you had to have God's guidance through the law in order to serve him, okay? You by yourself, you can't serve God. There's no way. There's no way. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Why? If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, okay, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath done you good. Okay? Now, totally different dispensation, okay? What is this talking about? This is showing you and telling you that, hey, you by yourself, you can't serve God, okay? God, you lost people, God has given you life today. He has allowed you to breathe, to see the sun or whatever kind of weather you're experiencing right now, okay? God has given you life. God has allowed you to live today. He's done you good. And what are you doing? Watching the television? Hmm? Bowing your knees to the Jesuits? Hmm? Hmm? Serving man and the traditions of men? Yeah. See, we have to remember what sin cost. Okay? Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, like we've been talking about. Okay? Genesis chapter 22. One verse. Genesis chapter 22. Verse 8. Not 21, Brad. Verse 8. Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. God will provide himself a lamb. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. God was manifest in the the flesh, okay? God will provide himself a lamb. God himself will be that lamb. That's what it cost to get, to remove sin. God himself, a lamb, okay? And remember in Leviticus chapter 17, come on, Leviticus chapter 17, Leviticus chapter 17, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. For the life of the flesh, not the flesh itself, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an, that maketh an atonement for the soul. So now you think about that with what we just read in Joshua, okay? Sin is so serious. Number one, you by yourself, without God, okay? For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. See, that is the plight of man. Because of why? Because of the flesh. You and I, brethren, we would be sinless. We would have no sin at all in our lives, would we? Of course, but for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. And in Joshua, it's like, you, you can't serve the Lord. You, you can't. It's hopeless. You need God within you. And of course, they had the law. It's like, here, you, you do what God said, and you will be right in his sight. Okay? You do the ordinances and the commandments, okay? And you'll be right in his sight. You have to do what he says. In this dispensation, you come to him on his terms. He seals you, okay? You 
He, he doesn't save you to let you go run rough shots and do whatever you want. No, he gives you the scriptures to live by the scriptures. Absolutely. But see, man left to himself. Man left to the law. Again, if you offend at one point, you, you offend at all. I couldn't even imagine what it must have been like to live under that. I mean, you could have joy in the Lord. Absolutely. Absolutely. But that noise like, oh, I got to go kill a, a sacrifice and shed the blood thereof. And, you know, mm. it is far more lenient today as far as by grace through faith than it was heretofore under the law. And how many of you take advantage of Say, nah, it's no big deal, right? And Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, as what was being addressed in Joshua, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. I'm a sinner who is chief. See, Paul is addressing that here. He addressed it in verse 15 and also in verse 19. <laughs> For the good that I would do, you know, do what you say, stay clean from sin. I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Sin and mess up. Okay? And also go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 22 on to verse 25. Galatians chapter 3, verses 22 on to verse 25. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterward be revealed. Because remember looking across the page here at verse 12, and the law is not a faith. Okay? Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Okay. Now, verse 20. Now, if I do that in ver uh, Romans chapter 7. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Again, he's not divorcing himself from his responsibility or accountability. What he is telling you is like, look. I can't be sinless. You're not going to, you wicked, devil, sinless perfection people. Okay? As long as we are alive, our spirit and soul housed within this sagging skin suit, you are going to sin. Because sin is in the flesh. That's what Paul is saying. Okay? Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Sin dwells in you where? In the flesh. And our spirit and soul are within this flesh. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. As long as we're here, we are going to sin. We don't want to sin. We ought to be terrified of sin because what it costs God to get to do away with it. And then you got these people who come along and teach you to have a light attitude on sin. But no, no, no. These people cheapen God's grace. They have no idea what grace truly is. Rather than just a get out of jail free card. Sickening. Sickening. Okay. Galatians chapter 5. Verses 16 on to verse 18. This also plays in with verses 17 and 18 again, okay? Uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 on to verse 18. This I say then, 
walk in the spirit. And walk, uh, where was it? <laughs> this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Unfortunately, do we always, every moment of the day, walk in the spirit? Do we abide? That doesn't mean that we are, lose our salvation or anything like that. No, because we are sealed until the day of redemption. Uh, redemption. God is within us permanently, okay? But, but, but brethren, you're not being forced. God wants you to choose what is right. And God has given us grace and he realizes that, okay? For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other look at that look at that so that ye cannot do the things that ye would now if i do that i would not it is not it is no more i that do it but sin that dwelleth in me do you get it do you get it for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Okay? <laughs> but, but, if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under. Flesh warth against the spirit. And these two are contrary. That you cannot do the things that you would. What is that? Be sinlessly perfect. It's impossible. And that is what Paul is telling us. In light of all of this, that is what Paul is telling us. Verse 21. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Because evil has been put into the flesh. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Verse 17 on to verse 22. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection, but... Verse 17 on to verse 22 in Mark chapter 10. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running, like the false prophets who run, okay? And kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? What shall I do? What shall I do? Hmm. Now, by the way, excuse me, verse 21. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. When I would do good, what good thing shall I do to inherit eternal life? Yeah. And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Why did Jesus say that? Because this guy didn't acknowledge him as the son of David, their God, their Messiah. He only saw a good master. Only one who could give him material things, maybe? Hmm? Wasn't, didn't realize, didn't have eyes to see that that's the Mashiach right before him. So Jesus says, why call Stami good? You know, good master? Yeah. Um, he was a little bit more than that, okay? There's none good but one, that is God. It's like, hey... I'm God. I'm the Father. Why are you calling me a good master? I'm your God. And then Jesus says, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Thank you. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him, 
loved him enough to tell him the truth. Not this sappy, um, splenda, sweet, bear hug. <laughs> no, true love is truth. Telling you the truth, okay? With a little tact, too, people. Come on. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing, one thing thou lackest. Good master, what thing may I do that I may inherit eternal life? What can I do? What can I do? Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. One thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. What gets into the way of things? One thing you lack. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. One thing you lack. One thing you lack. We're still, our spirit and soul are still within the skin suit. What is that one thing we lack? <laughs> Being with the Lord. Okay? Being with the Lord. And also, uh, while we're here, verse 27. And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. All things are possible with God. See, we lack. Well, you know, when we get redeemed, okay, then we will be truly redeemed, okay? The redemption of the purchased possession. We, the flesh will no longer trouble us. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Why is evil present with them? Because his spirit and soul was still in the skin suit. Evil is present with me. I find then a law, okay? One thing you lack. We are still, our spirit and soul are still within the skin suit. Once we get redeemed, okay? Now, verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward, after the inward man. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 3 and verse 6. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee in the, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, spirit, soul, and body. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Let's read verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. See, we lack that perfection of being with the Lord. But see, all things are possible with God if we abide in him. Not being sinlessly perfect, we can't do that, okay? But all things will be possible. Forgiveness, grace, provision, mercy, loving kindness, judgment, okay? Judgment, all of that. Is possible with God if we abide in Him. Okay? And remember, you're not being forced at gunpoint to abide in Him. Don't forget that. Okay? And of course, Matthew chapter 22, of course, still under the law, still in the Old Testament. Okay? Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 on to verse 40. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, 
and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, meaning the Old Testament. Okay? So, I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Verse 22, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But see, the inward man, Christ within us, to love the Lord our God, okay, with all, with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our mind, but yet the one thing we're lacking, we're still in our spirit and soul, are still within this corruptible skin suit. That's the one thing we lack. Evil is present with us. We're not going to get away from that. Okay? But we love the Lord our God with all our hearts and with all our souls and with all our minds. And because we do that, we want to abstain from all appearance of evil. We don't want to be entangled with the sins of the world or be like the world. We don't want to get into sin. But, but, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. It's, ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! It's like, it's like, okay? Verse 23. But I see another law in my members, in my flesh, warring against the law of my mind, which is supposed to belong to the Lord. Okay? And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. <laughs> and Paul, verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul's like, ah, you know, stands up, you know, ah. <laughs> You know, Job, chapter 42. I mean, brethren, <laughs> do you hate your flesh? I hate my flesh. <laughs> yes, we, we nourish it and take, it, take care of it, but there again, our flesh, you know, sin, evil is in the flesh. Okay? And this flesh can affect our minds, can affect our sight, can affect our hearts. Job, chapter 42, verses 1 on to verse 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent in dust and ashes. O oh, wretched man that I are you a sinner who is chief? I'm a sinner who is chief. Uh, a lot of us, of uh, the brethren of the Church of the Living God, we, we was like, well, no, I'm a sinner who is chief. No, I am, you know. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Seems hopeless, doesn't it? Verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. What is he saying? It's like, okay, my mind, I, I know, I know that because of the flesh, I know I'm going to sin. I know I'm going to sin. I know that. I know I'm going to sin. 
but I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. That doesn't mean that he gives himself over to sin. No, you mortify. You are admonished in the scriptures to mortify. But see, what he is saying is, I'm going to sin. I know I'm going to sin. But I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God. God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 8 on to 11. And last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, then am not me to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But the grace of God, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach. And so ye believed. But by the grace of God. By the grace of God. I am what I am. A sinner who is chief. I, I wish I could stop sinning. I can't, and neither can you. But see, have faith in God, okay? Who is just and righteous, who will forgive our sins if we come to him and confess our sins, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth away all of our sin. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Second Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 6 on to verse 10. What? Excuse me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, <laughs> verses 6 on to verse 10, brethren. Oh, one second, brethren. Where, where? It's, it's 10. <laughs> oh, one, one second. One second, brethren. I'm sorry about that, brethren. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, brethren. My legibility of my notes was very bad. <laughs> Second Corinthians 12, verse 6, on to verse 11. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, not in sin, not in sin, okay? in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you. For nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Now, the grace that is sufficient for us is when we live godly, in Christ Jesus and suffer persecution, okay? But see, we looked at that because I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're going to sin. Unfortunately, there is no getting away from that. We are going to sin. We are going to sin. But remember what it says in 1 John, okay? Remember what it says in 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, okay? 
Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We are not going to get away from sin, unfortunately. I mean, all sin. I mean, we can be, try, you know, seek to sin less, but to be totally sinless, no sin at all, can't happen. Because our spirit and soul are housed within this skin suit. Okay? And let's close this in John chapter 15. Verses 1 on to verse 8. John chapter 15. Verses 1 on to verse 8. I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Herein... Is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. None of us of the church of the living God, none of us want to sin or be in sin or do any sinful thing or think a sinful thought. Yeah, you know, if you've done foolishly, lay your hand upon your mouth. But unfortunately, because of the flesh and our spirit and soul are within the flesh, we are going to sin. That doesn't give us a pass for sin, but see, what that means is <laughs> for us to keep our focus more readily on God and to abide in Him. But remember, it's not a gunpoint. It's not a gunpoint. Okay? We have to choose those things daily. Hourly, every second, you know, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Okay. Like I said, there are people out there who have just wanted to that I, that contacted me about uh, eating a bullet because of something, and that's praise the Lord that you have that guilt. Yes, because that's. Knowing what sin cost God to get away, to do away with it? Yes. 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 But remember, brethren, remember. And mostly you babes too, because we who have been walking with our Lord for a time, we know. We know. And see, that makes God's grace even that much more sweeter. That much more sweeter. We are to abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay? But understand, we are going to sin. Sinless perfection in this life is just not possible. It's not going to happen. Okay? And if you are one who says that it is, you have never read Romans chapter 7. Never. Once in your life. <laughs> And if you have, you really haven't taken it to heart or the Lord hasn't shown you anything. So, hopefully this will help some of you. You know, hopefully. Lord willing. And that's going to be it for this video, brethren. Um, thank you so much for watching this if you do. Um, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus. How long, how long? Brethren, pray for one another. Keep one another in prayer. Pray for us because things have been getting pretty, um, things have been getting pretty hectic around here. Things are getting worse. 
for, for my wife. And um, we found out that she um, most likely is going to have to maybe have a hysterectomy. So, you know, to get rid of um, cancerous uh, things and whatnot. So, please keep us in your prayers as we pray for so many of you, brethren. Church of the Living God, we love you. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you to all you who pray for us and help us. Thank you so very much. We love every single one of you. And we pray for every single one of you too that we can remember and that we know of. So That is going to be it for this video. Hopefully this... Uh, sorry for some of my bumblings and stumblings and stuff like that. I apologize for that. <laughs> and here I thought I was being very fastidious. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We love you. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.